bus. <laughs> What's that? Five, six in a row now? I don't know. I counted seven, maybe. It'll never happen again. Oh, wait. Oh, look, there's Molly. Well, I, I haven't seen her in ages. Can you just pull over and we can say hello? Molls! Clara! Oh, it's wonderful to see you! Well, you can't miss us all today. <laughs> is this your handsome bus driver? I didn't call him that. Molly, this is Peter. Peter, this is Molly. I've heard. Heard what? You'll be joining us, I hope. Joining you here outside. On the big march from Aldermaston, the atomic weapons factory. This time we're all going to start there, then march on London. Straight to Parliament. Tens of thousands of us. They'll have to listen to us this time. Four days walk, isn't that right? Oh, that's a long walk. Worth it to save the world, don't you think? It's a waste of time, isn't it? If this is a waste of time, I'd like to know what really was worth someone's time. Oh, sorry, uh, Peter, Molly is a lecturer at the college too, when she's not showing me the ropes or working on her opus. Oh, that's all done now. The paper's published. Oh, that's wonderful. Good riddance too. I couldn't bear having it hanging over me any longer. <clears throat> uh, congratulations. Well done. Thank you. I can focus on this for a while. Much more important. Do you think this will make a difference? It jolly well has to, don't you think? Considering what's at stake, we're all under threat. I would have thought as a man of science you'd know all about it. Clara mentioned you'd been studying radiation carried by the clouds. Seems Clara's told you all my secrets. Well, I didn't know it was an official secret. No, no, it's, it's not. It's not. That's... it's fine. The radiation is what's terrifying. One hydrogen bomb could kill one million people in an instant. But then the radiation spreads and could kill millions more. Slowly this time. The British government is building more bombs when they should be doing the opposite. Disarming. Setting an example to the world. It must be more complicated than that. Wouldn't the Soviets think we were weak if we did that? We're not naive, you know. We want the three sides to stop entrenching themselves. All this posturing of theirs can only end one way. It's got to be unilateral nuclear disarmament. Otherwise, every day we are one step closer to the end. Well, I agree, although with any luck they'll thrash it out. And what if they don't? Right, uh, I've got a lecture to give. Peter, would you mind if I had a lift for the last mile? Your bus driver awaits, madam. It was good to meet you, Peter. Good to meet you too. You're coming on the march, aren't you, Clara? I wouldn't miss it for anything. And you, Peter? I, uh, I, I've rather too much work, actually. Don't think I'll get away. Shame. Well, in the meantime, I'm sure Clara will take very good care of you. I'll be sure to take care of her too. I can see you already are. Good grief, we'll be going now. You go and get your bus, Clara. Ding, ding! <sighs> Impressive, isn't she? No more than you are.
You know what I'm going to say? I've got a pretty good idea. You need to get out more. I have to work. Oh, come on, old chap. I have to say, I've never really understood it. Here you are writing about clouds, and yet you never see the sky. What do you know? I've got a lot of writing to be getting on with, Joe, so if you could... Well, let's see some of these words then, shall we? Come on. Man or a mouse. It's not like his top secret, is it? You can trust me. <sighs> what do you think, Sam? I'm sure some of it is very good. Here. I really have got a lot of work to do. It would seem so. Don't worry, old chap. Well, we'll hit that wall sometimes. It's all part of writing a paper. Oh, now, come on, don't be so modest, Sam. You dashed yours off in a few months. Well, maybe I was fortunate, but the point is... The point is, you set your sights straight and true, sat down and wrote the damn thing. It wasn't quite like that. Well, you did it. Now here you are, senior lecturer. Which makes two of us. <sighs> did Joseph not mention he got a promotion too? It does tend to slip his mind for a few seconds occasionally. Well, you know what could be open to him if he gets this right and gets promotion? His own department, eventually. Professorship. You can't reach those heights if you stay in this hovel for the rest of your life. Well, that's true, but I wouldn't My point quite was put it. that saying to Peter it's all part of the process is just kind words. But what we need to do is help our poor friend here be a man and write. All right. All right. Maybe I could use a little help here and there, but I don't need any pity. Oh, it's not pity. We believe in you. We just don't want to come back and have the same conversation. Just don't start again. That would be a disaster, wouldn't it, Sam? I think he's right, Peter. I know it's tempting to want to forget everything and start again on a blank page, but then you're risking making the same mistakes all over again. You know, sometimes it's better to see where you've gone wrong, that's all. That it help you. Good things might come of it. Good things like a promotion, I might add. Like Joseph says, don't start again. What does he know? He's only read one page. It practically is just one page. Peter. We don't enjoy seeing you struggle. I know what you need. Go on, then. What? What you need is some inspiration. Those three new girls. You know the ones. Undergraduates. They'll be at the Fox and Hounds this evening, and so, my good man, shall we? Eight o'clock. See you there? No, no, I should work. You should come. But if you can't, that's one girl for Sam and two for me. We'll buy you a pint anyway. See you later, old chap. Good luck with it. We'll see you later. Don't be shy, Peter. Come along. Man or a mouse? Oh, there you are. Seven o'clock, I thought you said. Oh, fashionably late. <laughs> I got you some tea. Oh, great idea, thank you. Uh, sugar for you? Yes, two for me, please. Okay. Oh my goodness, you're soaked. Where's your jacket? Oh, uh, well, uh, not on me, of course. Um, mind on other things. The paper, again? Still all-consuming? I can handle it. Oh, I don't blame you. I've been thinking about it quite a bit too. Uh, you have? Ab about my paper? Yes. 
You sounded rather blasé about it before. Oh, I certainly didn't mean to. I think there's really something in it. Could you finish it for me, do you think? I thought you could handle it. Uh, I can, I can't. It's... Well, it's, a, it's a beautiful idea. I think that's why it stuck with me. I know. I know. It, it could be something great. It could. It would be like <laughs> having a superpower, being able to predict the paths of the clouds. <laughs> and next step, control the weather. <laughs> you could be Cloud Man. Oh, it doesn't have quite the ring of Superman. Well, you could predict when it's going to rain, at least. <laughs> this weather reminds me of home. Was it this miserable all the time? No. Although Edinburgh always looked better in the rain to me, so that's why I choose to remember it. That's where you grew up, isn't it? That's right. I had a wee cottage in the Highlands, too. Our parents would take us up there once in a while. Us? Brothers and sisters? One brother. Older. Are you alright? Yes. Sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to pry. It's just, um... He was killed in a motorcycle accident near the cottage when he was uh, 18. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's not your fault. It's life. Or, well, the opposite. Uh, how old were you when it happened? Uh, 16. But still, I have a lot of happy memories about him. At the cottage, she always used to get up early, go out into the forest, bring back armloads of wood, wood for the fire. It was sweet, really. The house was already warm for us. I like the sound of doing that. I could do that. Grab an axe, go out each morning, chop wood. So you could be the woodsman, then. Oh, better than the cloud man. Stronger. Oh. No, I, I, I like Cloud Man. So, these clouds, you're a beautiful subject. What do you think you need? Oh, well, that's simple. More readings to work with. Hmm, sounds achievable. Well, in theory, yes, but they need to be first-hand, verifiable. All right. I take it it all has to be taken somewhere where the readings aren't affected by other factors? Hmm, you've got it. The thing is, it needs to be somewhere very remote, and I need to be there for a while, you see, to get enough readings. Mm, that makes sense. And I suppose the university budget doesn't exactly allow you to travel the world. Maybe... What? That cottage I mentioned, it's in the middle of nowhere, a highest place for miles around. And now would be the time to go with summer coming up. All summer free? Well, I'd have to check with my father, but it's remote. It's just a little place in the woods with a log fire and not much else. But if that's what you're looking for... If you're sure... Promise me you're serious about this? Oh, I promise you that. Mm, promise me that. Anyway, no more past tense. No more past tense, eh? Hmm. Sorry, I didn't know how I felt about the cottage and until I started talking about it. I shouldn't have said anything. We don't have to go. Thanks for understanding. Oh, but still, it sounds perfect for the work. I think I'd be able to find somewhere else, you know. I must be able to. It's just... 
I don't know what my father would say about me bringing an unmarried man up there. Well, if you're worried about your father, we don't need to go. No, no, I'm not worried about him. He's just not exactly Morton. Not exactly ringing the changes like malls. Now, her father even knows what she's up to. You should have seen Malls on that march, striding forward in front. Shame he didn't come. Quite the force of nature. Do you think the bus will make it there? The bus? That would cost a fortune. Not that bus, silly. <laughs> you know, your bus. Ding ding. Oh, oh, the mighty steed, of course. Well, the roads are pretty rough. Would you cope with it? I have absolutely no idea. Oh, careful. We want to make it in one piece. This really is the middle of nowhere. Just keep driving. I know it seems to go on forever. Just trust me. The cottage is only a few miles away now. How are you feeling about this? Oh, I, I, I'm fine. Okay, a bit strange, to be honest. Like I'm about to step back in time. I haven't been here in so long. I'm a bit nervous. I, I don't know. I, I don't quite know if things will feel different coming back. I hope you like it. Oh, I, I'm sure I will. And, and thank you for asking your father. I know this is a big thing. <laughs> well, I told him I was taking a friend. I didn't mention you were a man. Oh, uh, do, you, do you think he'd disapprove? Not exactly, no. Well, he is very old-fashioned, but... Well, thank you for coming along. Well, in, in, inviting me and coming along. Oh, no. I mean, without me, who'd you find it for a start? I couldn't rightly let you run away all by yourself. So you're running away with me? Stop it. This is purely professional, isn't it? We could run away. Ditch the paper. Live in the woods. You are being presumptuous, aren't you? No, I'm here to help. You'll need... Help with the equipment and recording all the data, all that. I couldn't leave you stranded up here in the middle of nowhere. I'd hunt for our dinner, be the man of the woods. Oh, he's back, is he? The woodsman. I'm telling you, I could do that. Just be the kind of man who remembers to fill up the tank when we're off to the middle of nowhere. Well, I am. I hope this isn't a big mistake. the BBC. Here is the news. The talks in Washington over the renewal of the Antarctic Treaty were in deadlock last night, with Soviet Russia threatening to walk out of discussions early. The new president, Lyndon B. Johnson, made an impassioned speech during which he criticized the Soviets' aggressive stance and reasserted the need for compromise. The president described the Russians as playing a lethal hand and asserted that continuing to do so would risk leading the world into war.
There's no one here either. Don't you worry now, Pete. We're here for you. Your father's on his way up. Said he'd like a word, too. Such a big boy now. What happened today? It's not your fault. I just want you to know that. These boys, well, I bet they're just trying to make you feel small because they're feeling small inside. Don't you listen to them, all right? Here he is. You sleep well. What do you say we carry on with making that rabbit hutch tomorrow, eh? That'd be nice. He's still awake? He is. No more tears, eh? No, no, he's... he's settled. Go on, it's all right, we'll be fine. Well, if you're sure. Good night, Pete. Night. Oh, Peter. What are we going to do with you? Your mother won't like me saying this, but it's true. You've got to learn to stand up for yourself. Next time, you hit them back. You hear me? An eye for an eye. That's what I've always said. Better still, if you see it coming, you get in there first. I know it sounds hard, but life's hard. Best to learn that now rather than later, eh? There. No, I don't want to hear another word. A long day tomorrow. So not another peep, all right? Good boy. See you in the morning. No more tears. Come up and it's going to come to her. 
You've got to hurry and get to everyone. Your name is weak. You'll make it worse for him. If you're talking about come up with, he should be the one dealing it out. He's not like that, Rach. He likes his books. He likes taking care of things. How old kids go like that? Just go out of it. They're very soft. He just hasn't learned yet, that's all. I learned it. My father taught me. And now it's my job as a father. Well, my job as a mother is to care for my son. Boys need discipline, Irish. Boys? Boys? Who are these boys? Every boy? I'm talking about Pete. He is disciplined. Look at him. Wait, what's that? It's nothing. Anyway. No, it's not nothing. Red, don't! What the hell are you doing out of that? I wasn't. Don't lie to me, Peter. What did I say? What did I say before I left? No more tears. And no more sound, I said. So why are you disobeying me, eh? You are in serious trouble tomorrow! What was I saying about lack of discipline? This is the result. This is what you're doing. I won't have it. In my house and all. My house too, Rich. And you should be bloody thankful for it too. I am, Rich. Just calm down, stop it. I work bloody hard for this family. It's not like you're bringing anything in. The least I ask for is a little respect. Where are you going? I'm his father. I'm the one who decides how to bring up my son. Reg, it's cold now. Where are you going? Out. The pub. Reg, come on. Good night, Pete. Sorry. Nothing. Damn kettle's hot, that's all. Watch out. Hmm. You all right? What's that? Oh, yes. Have you got the tea on? Ah, oh, water's boiling. Hope there's enough. Well... Don't worry about me, just make sure you have what you need. So you don't want any tea? Look, it's fine, nothing. Are you sure? It doesn't sound like nothing. Come in, Clara, do you read me? Look, I'm sorry about last night, I... I didn't mean for you to have to sleep on the sofa. Oh, oh, don't mention it. It's a, it's a very comfy sofa. Oh, um, I'm glad. I thought you'd be annoyed. It's not the same for us, is it? What, what do you mean? I know what, what most of the men at Cambridge are like. They can take home whoever they like and they can tell all their friends about it afterwards. Like, they just get a slap on the back and a well done old chap. For us, it's, it's different. 
you don't keep quiet about it like Molly doesn't, then you're a girl with a reputation. All right, look, it's, it's early. I'll get us some breakfast in a bit, shall I? That sounds nice. It didn't have anything to do with you, that's what I mean. Not just me, you mean? <laughs> All right, I'm generalizing. It's just, I suppose I've had friends at school, um, girlfriends who play into this whole thing too, the whole parade of it. They couldn't understand my interest in science. They thought I was a bit weird. Well, they're lost. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just in an odd frame of mind. I thought the work might help keep my head straight. I can take over this if you want to rest. No, no, I, I like it. I'm enjoying it, really. I want this to be good. That's one thing I definitely got from my father. It's perfectionism, for better or worse. Hard to live up to. Well, it's good to be ambitious, and what's this if it's not ambitious? Speaking of which, there's something I noticed. Show me. I've just looked at the latest batch of atmospheric radiation readings. But don't worry, everything seems to be moving in ways we're expecting. It's it's all consistent. It's just it's just consistently higher too compared to the ones we took a few months ago. He's got new equipment, maybe. That would explain why everything's jumped at once. Well, I'll double check everything again now. It's just something I noticed as I glanced over them. It'll be good for me to focus on something like this anyway. Get my head down. Just take care of yourself. Oh, don't worry about me. Look, why don't you look around? There's plenty of books to read. Oh, why not, if you're sure? Oh, well, look at this. Oh, that whole thing. Feel free to put something on. Sorry, there's no...
I should have done it sooner. I'm not imposed. Here. Do you think you could manage to hold on to me? Floyd, Floyd, can you hear me? Peter, you're safe. Where are you? You didn't run into any Soviets, then. I'm guessing you found the Norwegians. Tell me they've got a doctor, mate. This leg is killing me. Floyd, the base I'm at, it's not Norwegian. It's Soviet. Can you repeat that? This is a Soviet base. No, no, I'm fine, Floyd. I, I, I don't think there's anyone here either. It's freezing. Everything was powered down. I, I, I think I just had to restart the generator again. I don't understand. Are we way off course? No, no, it makes no sense. You followed the map, right? I just followed my instincts. But there's another map here. Does it explain anything? Might be the Norwegian base. Yes, I, yes, I can see it. I can see the flag. Ah, well, at least I'm not going crazy. And at least you haven't been attacked yourself. What's the terrain like? Is it a straight shot? It looks like it's between two mountains, on the other side of a bay. There's a ship marked on there too. But at least that means the base is pretty well supplied. 
But there's something else on the map. Some area shaded out past the mountains. What does that mean? Is it dangerous? I don't know, mate. Floyd, I, I can see if I can find some medicine for you. Bring it back to you. No, 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 Peter, that makes no sense. We'd still be stuck out here. I haven't been able to raise anyone on the radio. Our only hope is for you to find a friendly out there. Yeah, 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 yeah,